a very good evening uh, to all uh, dear uh, uh, brothers uh, and sisters uh, in uh, Christ. We thank our uh, Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving us uh, uh, another opportunity to gather uh, once again and to discuss his wonderful uh, words of life. So, dear brethren, so since last week uh, we have been studying about the subject about uh, uh, church. So, what is the meaning of church? We saw a church is not a building. <clears throat> so, church means uh, uh, the group of people. So the group of people means uh, the one who you see, believes in Christ. And uh, we saw in the gospel age, uh, different categories of uh, Christians. Uh, so you can see the highlight portion here, Q, P, M and N. So we see that uh, uh, the Q are the hypocrites uh, and uh, the P are the you see the believers, the majority of them we can see in this world. So is Christ uh, looking uh, the believers or else he is seeking the, you see, uh, hypocrites in this world? So if you see, Christ is saying uh, none of these uh, people. Because just by believing Christ, uh, you can't be saved. That is the first step of the salvation. So there is other things uh, that has to be done. Uh, that is what we studied last week. Uh, that uh, just by carrying the Bible, going to the church uh, regularly, singing songs, uh, participating in meetings, uh, you see, giving offerings to the Lord, doesn't make uh, one to be a Christian in God's sight. <clears throat> Though he may claim that he is a Christian, you see, but he can't, uh, you see, uh, stand before God as a Christian because Jesus clearly tells. That uh, not everybody who calls Lord, Lord, Lord can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, many people during the days of Jesus, uh, you see, many people followed him. You see, they were going behind him wherever he went. Uh, you see, uh, 4,000 people, 5,000 people. But uh, did all the 4,000 and 5,000 became the disciples of Jesus? Did everybody become the disciples of Jesus? Let me see who can answer. No, brother. No. Then, what did Jesus do one day? As he was so you know, seeing this crowd, he turned towards them and said the condition of discipleship. Now, what is the terms of discipleship? What did Jesus say to the large crowd? Who can tell? Jesus told, no. If any man wants to be my disciple, hmm, tell me, what he has to do? Deny ourselves and Very carry good. the cross. Very good. Then, third one, important one. Carry the cross. Hmm. Okay. Follow his steps. Yes. You see, deny yourself, carry the cross, follow him. So, as soon as Jesus uh, mentioned this one, uh, everybody was totally shaken because they never expected to deny themselves. Uh, they were so much loving themselves. They were only asking for miracles, benefits from Jesus. But what did they do to the Lord? Nothing. Nobody did anything. You see, the ten lepers were healed. Nine ran off. They were so happy to visit their house. But only one person came and gave gratitude to God. This is the same condition today. Many of the believers only believe in Jesus, only for benefit. And Jesus knew that they all believed in Jesus only for benefit. Now, did Jesus believe them? Huh? Did Jesus believe the huge crowd who was following him? Hmm. Tell Munasta. Huh? I am not able to hear your voice. I think uh, some problem with your mic. You no. spoke something, I could not hear anything. No, still your audio is not audible, sister. Okay, somebody else can answer. No, brother. No. No. Yes, Jesus did not believe them because he knew what was in them. So Jesus today is seeking the followers, not just believers. Now you tell me, 
Therefore, uh, in Matthew 22, 14, we see, you know, many are called, few are chosen. Now, uh, we should be of which class? We should be of the called class or the chosen class? Tell me. Hmm? Uh, Surita, tell me. Which we should be of the which class? Called ones or the chosen ones? We should be the believer of Christ or followers of Christ. Anil brother. Chosen. Hmm. Chosen means followers. Called means believers. Okay. Good. So we should be of the chosen ones. Okay. Last week uh, we saw all these things and all. So today let us see. So one week, once when we come to the stage of chosen ones, we see that is the time that God anoints us with the Holy Spirit. You see? Now we can see in this divine plan chart. You see? Huh? We can see here plain him. Plain him is the plane of consecration where uh, they offer their bodies as a living sacrifice. This is what Jesus did at River Jordan. He offered himself as a sacrifice to the God. And that is the time that God gave him the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus have Holy Spirit from birth? No. He was born, you see, by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit. You see, doesn't mean that Jesus from birth had the Holy Spirit. If he had the Holy Spirit, why should God give him Holy Spirit at the baptism? So, Jesus there was given the Holy Spirit. So, similarly, if any man wants to be the disciples of Christ, if they deny themselves, accept the terms and conditions of discipleship, carry the cross and follow Jesus, that is the time that uh, they are to symbolize this one in immersion. You see, they are to symbolize this one in proper, you see, water immersion. That is the meaning of baptism. We are going to see all these things in the coming days. You see, just because you believe in Jesus, you don't take... Uh, you see, immersion, that is not at all, you see, proper. When did Jesus do it? Hmm? He already believed. He already believed in God, but he dedicated his life. That is the time that you need to take a immersion. You see, and that is the time God seals with the Holy Spirit. Read 2 Corinthians 1.22. 2 Corinthians 1.22. Anil Buddha, can you read? Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ah, who hath also sealed us. You see, uh, sealed us uh, with the uh, earnest of the Holy Spirit. Uh, when do somebody seal? When you go to the bank, they seal it and give. That's acknowledgement that your uh, deposit is accepted. So similarly, this is the guarantee once we receive the Holy Spirit. That our consecration is accepted in the Lord. Dear brethren, that is the time that God gives his Holy Spirit. And we become new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 uh, Joel brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, if any man be in Christ, uh, once uh, they are baptized, they are in Christ, then they are new creatures, it seems. Uh, old things are passed away. They immerse and wake up, old things are gone. New things have come up, uh, they have become new creatures. Uh, you see, that is the time that uh, God gives us the Holy Spirit and a new creature, you see, begins to grow within us. That is the time, you see, many people claim that, oh, once we are baptized, we become born again Christians. Huh? So once we are immersed uh, and once God gives us the Holy Spirit, we are born again Christian, we are born new. You see, uh, what does the Bible say? Jesus actually answered this same question, you see, to whom? To Nicodemus. Nicodemus came and, uh, see, in the night and spoke to Jesus. He asked Jesus, Lord, uh, I know that you are a teacher from uh, God. I believe so many things. But uh, what should I do to enter uh, and see the kingdom of uh, God? 
You see, his question was that, how do I understand uh, so many spiritual things? Uh, what thing I should do? You see, and that is the time that Jesus took the opportunity to explain how a born again person will be. Let us read, first of all, John 3, verse 5. Uh, Mundana sister, can you read John 3, verse 5? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Ah, you see, except a man be born of water and Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you can't enter, uh, forget about seeing and understanding the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus was much worried. Uh, you see, uh, what did Jesus say? You should be born of water and Spirit. So, Many people think that uh, uh, born of water and spirit means water. When we are baptized, we are born of the water. So that is the time that we are born of the spirit also. You see? And they think that uh, once we are baptized, we are uh, born again as a uh, born again Christian. Uh? Now, uh, uh, does baptism mean that you are a born again Christian? What did Jesus say? See, Jesus answered this question beautifully to Nicodemus. The answer is given in verse 8. Where it clearly tells how a born again Christian will be there. You see? Let us read verse 8. Uh, Munashtra, please read verse 8 also. This wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every everyone that is born of the Spirit. See? Uh, how everyone who is born of the spirit, it says, he will be like the wind. The wind bloweth, you see, and uh, we can listen it. You see, we can hear it. We can hear the sound, but can we see the wind? No, we can't see the wind. This is the way a born again person will be. Imagine a born again person, uh, are they like wind? They can't be seen at all. Only sound can be heard. Can we, can we see Christians? We see. Then why is so difference between what Jesus says and what the people claim to be, to be today to be as the born again Christian? You see, actually, huh? this born again nature was first attained by Lord Jesus Christ. How? So Jesus was in the flesh. He died on the cross. But when he was resurrected, he was born again as what? As a spiritual body. He was born as a spiritual being with a spiritual body. In that spiritual body only, Jesus went to heaven. Therefore, remember, you see, whenever uh, he appeared to the disciples, how did he appear? Huh? All the doors were completely sealed. The resurrected Lord came and stood in between them. You see, he could not be seen. But uh, he could be heard. Uh, you see, he was like the wind. Uh, as Jesus told in John 3, 8, one who is born again of the Spirit, he shall be like wind. Uh, nobody can see him, but he can come and go. This is, was only possible by Jesus because after death, he was resurrected as a spirit being. Read John 20 verse 19. John 20 verse 19. Uh, Romister, can you read? Uh, Romister, Amar brother, you are there? Can you read? Yes, yes, brother. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of a Jewish, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Uh, sister, huh? what happened? Uh, when the doors were closed, uh, uh -huh. 
Right. Everything was closed. How can somebody enter when the door is closed? It was possible only from a spirit being. If he is a spirit being, he could have come when the door was closed. This uh, was made possible by Jesus because he was resurrected as a spiritual being. He was no more in the flesh. You see, that is the time where Jesus was born in the flesh. Actually, that word where in John 3, 8, it says that you must be born in the uh, spirit and water. That word born is from the Greek word ginayo. In Greek, this can be translated in either way, begotten and born. You see, there's a lot of difference between begotten and born. Uh, begotten means what? Uh, begotten means the process of conceiving in the mother's womb. Late only, they are born after nine months. So, before that one, they are not born. They are begotten. But in Greek, you see, there is only one word for this one. So the translators who are translated, instead of translating, you see, you must be first begotten to enter into the kingdom of God. They were translated born. Why? Because they think that as soon as they are baptized, they receive the Holy Spirit. They are born in the Holy Spirit. No, nobody can be born in the Holy Spirit. You see, huh? in uh, flesh, it is only after the death in the resurrection. So first, what, have, what should happen? Before a birth should take place, begotten should happen now. That is what Jesus clearly told to Nicodemus. See, let us read those verses again. Now clearly understand. John 3rd chapter, verse 5, first. Then we'll continue reading other verses. So, uh, Anil Budar, can you read? Jesus answered, Barely, barely, I saw unto thee, ex except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Ah, see, he told, Until you are born again, you can't enter the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus was totally confused. How can I be born again? I am very old. Huh? How can, Lord? How is this possible? Should I enter my mother's womb again and be born the second time? He questions the Lord. Read, see, verse 4. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Mm, see, he puts a question. How is it possible that you are telling to be born again? I am very old. How can I be born again? Then Jesus explains the process of birth. Read verse 6. Hmm. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Ah, see, he clearly tells that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. What is the meaning of this one? Jesus was actually telling the process of birth. He was telling, he that is first born of the flesh has to be first begotten in the flesh. The process is there now. You see? First, they will be conceived in mother's womb. They will grow for nine months. After nine months, they will be delivered, you see, and born in the flesh. It is the same way with the spirit. He that has to be born in the spirit has to be first begotten in the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus was explaining. And he beautifully demonstrated with his own life. At baptism, Jesus was actually begotten of the Holy Spirit and it was with him as a new creature. When he died, he sacrificed his life, his fleshly body on the cross for the redemption of Adam and his mankind. And he was resurrected as a spirit being. How? A new creature which was inside, he was resurrected. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, Jesus had three births. One, when he was created with the father. Second, in the mother's Mary's womb. Third, in the resurrection as a spirit uh, being. Why? Why this process is necessary? Why Why this is necessary? Why should be one born in the spirit uh, to enter the kingdom of heaven? You see, we all know the kingdom of God has two parts. A heavenly part and the earthly part. And the earthly part, uh, the ancient Vajis will be there, who will take care of all the affairs of this world. But 
if you need to go to the heavenly part, the heavenly salvation, you see, it is uh, only possible if you can go only in the spirit being. You can't go in this fleshly body to heaven. This earthly body has got limitations. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly says in 1 Corinthians 15.50 that uh, flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of uh, uh, heaven. You see, read 1 Corinthians 15.50. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 58, verse. Joel, brother, can you read? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Very good, brother. See, flesh and blood cannot inherit. You can't go in flesh and blood in a fleshly body. Huh? To what extent you can go? Go in a rocket to a certain extent. But beyond that one, we can't go to heaven in this fleshly body. We need to leave this body. In the spirit body only we can go. That is the same way Jesus went to heaven. Dear brethren. So, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, be part of the spiritual body who is going to rule with Christ, then we need a spiritual body. The same way Jesus went. You see, the angels took him. In Acts first chapter is given now. They say, eh? the same Lord as he is going, he will turn again the second coming. Therefore, Jesus had three births. One, he was created with a father. Second, through Mother Mary in the flesh. Thirdly, he was rejected uh, is a, as a spirit uh, nature. It is the same way with us, dear brethren. First, when we consecrate, when we dedicate our life to the Lord, in immersion, you see, God gives us the Holy Spirit. Uh, this Holy Spirit will be growing in our body as a new creature, as a small new creature, as a you see, a small, uh, you see, uh, egg will be growing in a mother's womb. Yeah, the zygote, it will be growing now. Huh? How it will grow? Now, week on week, it will be developing, you see. And what happens? Slowly. Huh? And uh, outward, everybody can see that uh, baby is there inside. But after nine months of complete maturity, that baby will be delivered out. So, that uh, baby has to be nurtured properly. Huh? First, initially, there will be a lot of fight. You see, the baby doesn't get attached to the mother. Whatever mother eats, everything will be vomited. But once it gets attached, what happened? Mother can eat well. She has to eat well. Then only the child will be healthy child. Similarly, for the new creature, you see, to get adjusted to this old body, it's not so easy. Initially, there will be a lot of fight. You see, a lot of warfare will be there. Therefore, the Bible says that this is a treasure. The Holy Spirit is a treasure which God has kept in this uh, human body, it seems. Uh, huh? Read. 2 Corinthians 4.7. Sunita, sister, can you read? 2 Corinthians 4.7. Sunita, sister, are you there? But do we have this treasure in our earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. The excellency of power may be of God, not of us. This treasure, the Holy Spirit, you see the precious thing God has kept in the earthen vessel. This has to grow. Day by day, we need to grow. Now, is it possible immediately? No. Why? As a child doesn't get adjusted to the mother, it will take a lot of time. Similarly, there will be a fight between the new creature and the world creature. How? The new creature will tell, huh? oh, Raju, speak uh, the truth. What will the old creature tell? The old creature will tell, oh, Raju, don't speak truth. Speak the lies or else you'll be in a trap. You see? Huh? The old creature will tell on the TV. Huh? Let us see some program. The new creature will tell, no, this is against your consecration. Sit and read the Bible. Sit and read so many books are there. Sit and read so many notes are there. Listen to the subject. You see? Understand the subject, sir. You see, any doubts, any clarification, <clears throat> discuss with the brethren, spend time in the Lord. This is what new creature will tell. What is the old creature will tell? Hey, mad fellow, leave all these things. Come, let us go and enjoy in the world. You see, go roam over here and there. Spend our precious time. So daily, what will happen? There will be fight. The new creature will fight against the old creature. Sometimes the old creature only will win. But ultimately, the new creature should win. Then only it will be resurrected as a perfect uh, spiritual body, dear brethren. So let us read a few verses. Galatians 5th chapter 16 and 17. 
Galatians 5th chapter 16 and 17. Uh, Joel brother, can you read? This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh uh, lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do things that ye would. See, you cannot do the things which you want. Why? Because the spirit is against the flesh. You see, the spirit is against the flesh. Why? Because eh, the new creature is totally against the world. Dear brethren, so what will happen? There will be warfare. There is a warfare, isn't it? Eh? Eh, now read Romans 7 chapter uh, 18 and 19. Romans 7 chapter 18 and 19. Uh, Munna sister, can you read? For I know that in me, that is in my place, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I will not, that I do. Ah, see, sister, very clearly telling about us. Huh? I know huh? what to do good, but I'm not able to do it. I know, I know that I have to do good, but uh, but I'm not able to perform it in my action because there is evil that is in me. It is not at all allowing me to do good. That is the fight between the old creature and new creature. This is applicable only for the consecrated. Now read 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. Uh, Anil Budar, can you read? 26 and 27, brother. Ah. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be uh, cast away. Ah, see with that, Apostle Paul, what does he say? Huh? I fight. Well, that means he has a fighting within himself, not fight with the neighbor. Huh? But how? Huh? Huh? Has one bit there? You see, I keep my body under. Why? Because after preaching to everybody, if I myself lose the war, then I will be cast off. I lose the reward. That is the reason he say I will fight. Imagine, these are, this is the work out your salvation. This is consecration. Not just believing in Jesus, uh, you see? That's first step. After this one, so many steps are there. So we need to fight. Uh, we need to keep that old man. Old man will keep on sprouting. You see? Uh, he tells to cheat. Uh, he tells to tell lies. He tells to do fraud. He tells to spend time in worldly things. All these things. Uh, you can take so many examples from your life. Uh. See, all the worldly things, uh, it comes to our mind. Uh. What does the Bible say? Enmity. Huh? I say friendship with the world is enmity with God. So this fight will be there. Read Second uh, Timothy four seven and eight. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Second Timothy four seven and eight? Okay, Second Timothy four seven and eight. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And so forth, there is a laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous, righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Ah, see, brother, see, ultimately, what does Apostle Paul say? I have fought a good fight, fought, I have finished. See, initially, what did he say? I could not do. I can't do. I'm not able to do. Then he began to fight. Second step. Third step, he has fought. So, similarly, day by day, there will be quarrel between, fight between old creature and new creature. 
we need to overcome it. We need to fight it. You see, that is the reason the Bible says you need to put on the new man. Read Colossians 3rd chapter 8 to 10. Joel brother, can you read Colossians 3rd chapter 8 to 10? But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, fleetly communication out of your mouth, lie not one to other another, seeing that ye have put off the old man which is his dead, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Very good, brother. See, what is there? Now you also put off these things. As you remove the old cloth, we have put off. As you put the new cloth, we have put on. See, remove all the old things. Put on godly things in Christ, dear brother. So, this is how we need to fight. Huh? Let us read Proverbs 23, 7. Brother, please read Proverbs 23, 7. Munna sister, please read. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Very good, sir. See, as a man thinks, so is he. See, so our thoughts are important. That's the reason. That is where... A new mind and old mind are fighting. Therefore, this one, you see, ultimately the new man should be born. So, therefore, we see how many classes are there? Called chosen. But among the chosen, you tell me, can everybody fight this warfare? As we saw today, can 100% every of the Christians can fight this warfare and win the crown? Can all do it? Tell me. No. Uh, hmm. Not everybody can do it. But few people will do it. That means there are again two classes of people. So that means what? Among them, huh? some will be faithful, some will be unfaithful. Uh -huh. These two classes are there, dear brother. So we should be of which class? Called one? Chosen one? Or the faithful one? You tell me. Now we should be of the which class? Faithful. Only one person is answering. What about the other people? Anil brother, huh? Sunita sister, Joel brother, Munna sister. You all don't want to be faithful. Huh? Do you all want to be faithful or not? Anil brother? Joel brother? Yes, brother. Yes, hmm. brother. Yes, for what? Yes, for what? Faithful. Yeah. Very good. So you all want to be faithful. Very good, brother. That is our main name, brother. We all want to be faithful. Let us read. Revelation 17, 14. Anil brother, read. Revelation 17, 14. This shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Uh -huh. They that are with him are called, chosen, faithful, underline it, brother. So, last week we read called, chosen, but this time we see the faithful ones. Now you tell me, do you want to be a believer or follower or faithful follower? Tell me, who will answer the answer properly? Faithful followers. Very good. Faithful followers. That is what Jesus said. Any man wants to be my disciple, deny himself, carry the cross, follow me. Not just carrying the cross. Some people only carry the cross. They don't even move the cross. It will be, they just keep on carrying, supporting him. Just standing there only. Follow him. Follow his footsteps and be faithful to the Lord. 
until our death. Okay. Thank you. So any doubts, any questions you have, we can ask. Anybody, any questions?